Hello brothers and sisters. So let's touch on Israel quickly. Latest happenings, latest news stories coming out of the Holy Land. First one, Al-Qaeda and Islamic State call on followers to strike Israeli and US and Jewish targets. Now bear in mind, this is worldwide, not just in the land of Israel. In a series of statements over the past two weeks, affiliates of Al-Qaeda congratulated Hamas on its invasion of Israel, a reference to the terrorist attack that killed 1,400 people on the 7th of October. The Israeli military offensive in Gaza, which has caused a humanitarian crisis so far, killed more than 4,500 people, according to medical authorities, in Hamas-controlled territory. It provoked outrage across the Islamic world and offers an opportunity to extremist groups, and that is why they're now rallying together. A recent, recent statement from Al-Shabaab, Al-Qaeda's powerful affiliate in Somalia, said the conflict in the Middle East was not just the battle of the Islamic factions in the land of Palestine, but rather the battle of the entire Muslim Ummah. It added, Muslims must gather and offer everything they can to support the Mujahideen against the Jews and their hypocritical infidel allies. The strength of this nation lies in the strength of its jihadist fronts. Uh, Yemen also issued similar statements and they now have a severe weather problem, go figure. We congratulate your actions and urge you to continue biting your teeth with patience on the path of jihad. They attacked the Jews wanting to lift the sword of humiliation from their necks. The sword of humiliation and the only way to lift it was to murder babies and do all the sick, horrifying crimes that they did. Makes sense in an evil, dark world, not in a normal, sane world. Israel warns to cut off the head of the snake, threatens to wipe Iran and Lebanon off the face of the earth. Now let me be clear here, before I even read further. Lebanon with Hezbollah is a very real threat, just with the amount of rockets and missiles that they have ready to use against Israel. So they would have to make a huge statement against Lebanon, nuclear, Damascus. And Iran is a very, very big threat, especially since she's now been funded in billions of dollars that she can push into a nuclear program and use that against Israel. So again, same thing. In a stern warning, Israel threatened to cut the head off the snake and launch a military attack against Iran if the Tehran-backed Hezbollah joins the ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict. In a no-holds-barred interview with the Daily Mail on Sunday, Israel's Minister of Economy, Nir Barkat, said that Iran and Lebanon would be wiped off the face of the earth if Hezbollah, operating from Lebanon, joined the war against Israel. In a bid to deter Iran from further intrusion, Barkat stated, Israel will not only eliminate Hezbollah if a northern front is initiated, but it will target Iran directly. The plan of Iran is to attack Israel on all fronts. If we find they intend to target Israel, we will not just retaliate to those fronts. We will go to the head of the snake, which is Iran. So again, huge threat to Iran. And again, that could be a nuclear threat because Israel does have nuclear missiles capable of transversing that distance. They just haven't advertised it all the time. And she's backed into a corner and she might be very willing to use those nuclear weapons in that situation. Now, the, the scary thing is Hezbollah and Lebanon pretty much occupying the same space. Hezbollah has been attacking and attacking nonstop. But Lebanon saying she's not part of this. How long before Israel says, you know what, this is a war from Lebanon. You are attacking. We're just going to go for it. Not long. Israel's Iron Beam, a new era in defense technology. So we've had the Iron Dome all the time. Now we've got the Iron Beam. The new laser defense system promises to revolutionize anti-missile and anti-rocket networks. They are set to use the Iron Beam, which they've now started using. It is capable of shooting down incoming threats like rockets, drones, artillery, and mortar shells. The new technology will significantly strengthen Israel's air defense capabilities. The Iron Beam system uses a fiber laser to destroy airborne targets. It can operate by itself 
or integrated as part of an air defense system. The moment the surveillance system identifies a threat, it is tracked by vehicle platforms and then eliminated. One of the main advantages of using directed energy weapons like the Iron Beam over conventional missile interceptors like Iron Dome is the cost per shot. The cost of each interception using Iron Beam is estimated to be around $2,000 per shot, covering all expenses. This is a stark contrast to the $100,000 to $150,000 interceptor firing cost with the dome. So every time we see the Iron Dome in operation and you see that little explosion as they intercept these missiles, that's $100,000 disappearing, $150,000 disappearing. The Iron Beam has a range of 4.3 miles and has the ability to target and take down unmanned aerial vehicles as well. It will be the sixth element of Israel's integrated missile defense system along with Arrow 2, Arrow 3, David Sling and Iron Dome. By the end of 2023, energy levels could possibly reach 100 kilowatts or more and the defense system could focus a beam the size of a coin at 6.2 miles distance. In conclusion, it represents a significant advancement in defense technology and the potential for strengthening air defense across the field. So it has now been tested. I've actually seen some video footage of it in operation. It is very, very impressive. And from $150,000 in interception down to $2,000, way, way more sustainable. And if they prove the concept, which they're busy doing right now, they're going to have a lot of countries signing up to buy the system from Israel in the wake of whatever this war leaves behind. Galant's three-phase plan. After Hamas is eliminated, Israel will seek new security regime. Defense minister says October 7th marked the day when the process of eradicating Hamas began as Israel will seek to free itself of any residual responsibility for the Gaza Strip on the day after. Speaking at a meeting of the Knesset, Gallant outlined his objectives with a primary focus on eliminating Hamas and dismantling its military and governance capabilities. Additionally, he expressed intentions to strip Israel of all responsibility for the Strip and establish a new security framework. This is a three-phase plan, he explained. We are currently in the first phase. This involves the military campaign aimed at targeting terrorists and disrupting Hamas infrastructure with precise airstrikes. Phase one. The second phase will be an interim period of lower intensity war with a focus on eliminating pockets of resistance. The third and final phase will entail the establishment of a new security framework in the Gaza Strip, relinquishing Israel's responsibility for life in the Strip and the creation of a new and secure reality for Israeli citizens and residents of the whole border area. So again, great idea, I agree. They've had enough now. I do believe that when they're done, they will take a large piece of that Gaza Strip away and re-establish their own people there as part of their security measure. I can see that happening from the way everything's going down. Once they've eliminated Hamas from that area, there's going to be a lot of restructuring, a lot of new land that's taken back. They're going to push back into Judea, Samaria with a vengeance. I see Jerusalem and Temple Mount being a thing. All these things might come to place very, very soon. And again, for a lot of it, we technically shouldn't be here or shouldn't have to be here. That means the rapture is really, really close. Head of Detroit synagogue found stabbed to death. A young synagogue leader was the victim of a brutal murder outside her Detroit home on Saturday. Police say the 40-year-old Samantha Wall, president of the Isaac Agree downtown Detroit synagogue, was stabbed multiple times and blood trailed from her home. Sam was a kind person. She was driven by a sincere love of community, state and country. She used her faith and activism to create a better place for everyone. 
At this point, we do not have more information, but we'll share when it becomes available. The ongoing story around that is it was related to a hate crime by people protesting and carrying on against the Jews worldwide in the wake of the Hamas-Israel war. Thousands of ultra-Orthodox request to join the IDF in war. The new recruits to serve in support roles such as medics and search and rescue. 120 will be drafted on Monday, the IDF says. is a dramatic decision in an ultra-Orthodox society. Up till now, and it's been a very controversial policy, Israel's government, because of the religious connections there, have decided that the ultra-Orthodox don't need to serve in the military. In the wake of what's happened in Israel now, they are volunteering and they want to serve. 120 ultra-Orthodox men will join the IDF this week and thousands of others have requested to do the same while Israel is fighting the war in Gaza. Data from the IDF's personnel department shows that since the beginning of the war, 3,000 ultra-Orthodox men have asked to volunteer for military service, of which 2,100 have already filled out all the forms. The ultra-Orthodox have historically been exempt from military service under pressure from the political representatives in the Knesset and the coalition, who say that the role of the Haredi man is to study Torah and not enlist. This has been a point of contention in a society where service in the military or national service in the community is compulsory, and most Israelis enlist in the IDF at 18 years old for a three-year service for men and a two-year service for women. And now that has changed, and the divisions are changing. Former enemies are pulling together. Those who were trying to destroy each other less than a month ago are now suddenly having each other's backs and standing together shoulder to shoulder to push forward. If anything has been achieved, it has been to draw them closer together and bond them together in their, their fight and their push back against the darkness. So that is a good thing. The ultra-Orthodox joining out of their own free will is a good thing. Those changes are necessary for the land of Israel. Keep praying for Israel. Keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Keep praying for the gospel of Jesus Christ to go out throughout Israel, throughout Gaza, throughout everywhere in the Arab world and touch many, many lives. God bless. Keep looking up and keep listening for that trumpet. Shalom.